thank you for uh, inviting me to the Federal Judicial Academy. I'm, I'm delighted to come here as a visiting faculty and uh, to teach at this premier uh, institute which trains judges in Pakistan. Uh, so coming to your question, uh, how is data relevant for judiciary? Uh, as you know, uh, with, with advanced computing technology, data is relevant in every sphere of our lives. The phones we use, uh, the, the computers we use uh, are all integrally linked to data. So it is but natural that in the judicial sphere as well, data is considered absolutely key. And if we want to reduce the massive backlog in the Pakistani courts, where according to the most recent statistics in civil courts of Pakistan, it can take up to five to 10 years for a case to be decided, data has this huge potential to basically decrease backlog, increase judicial efficiency, and basically augment the performance of uh, human capability of judges uh, to deliver not just fair judgments, but also more efficient uh, judgments. And so what is data? Uh, so data is any text that can be used to analyze. So for example, the books we write, the notes we make is also data. The, uh, the numbers you see on the Pakistani stock exchange or TV is also data. In cricket, when we see uh, performance or these worms of uh, different teams competing and having higher uh, run rate versus lower run rate, that's basically data. Now, how can it be used in the judiciary? It's actually the judges are bombarded every day with data, but they have to recognize. So that's why it becomes very important to basically distinguish not just what is data, but also what is good data and what is bad data and how to interpret it what is good evidence, what is bad evidence. And I think one can spend, to answer this question, one can spend his whole lifetime. And actually, one of the courses which we are going to introduce at the Federal Judicial Academy is Data Science for Judges, and it actually exactly tackles this. So how to distinguish between good and bad evidence. So uh, the long answer is for judges to see and come to my course. But the short answer is that many people don't know that there is a hierarchy of statistical evidence. So every method which we use to generate data, usually you have a mathematical equation, it, you put in data, and it gives an answer. And that answer, that mathematical equation, which equation is this, is, will determine whether the data evidence is good or bad. But if I have was to, uh, so there is a hierarchy of uh, scientific evidence. There is a number one ranked evidence, there is number two ranked evidence, number three. So if I give you a short answer, the best data, if the sample size is the same, so considering the same sample size, is data generated from a randomized controlled trial. So, so if this was not true, none of our medicines would work. So how do we know if a medicine works or not? You give a disprint to 100 people, and to 100 people you give a placebo, uh, a sweet uh, a placebo, and you see that whether the headache of the person reduced. Mm -hmm. So any data generated through an experiment, if the sample size is the same, that's the best kind of evidence. So in the example I gave you on the Aga Khan Hospital, uh, that data is not generated from an experiment. You are ex generating it just from looking at hospital people and non-hospital people. And you must notice that in hospital people, the people who went there, they are a selected sample. So they are already sick. That's why they went to the hospital. So what you have to do is a judge, when he's ruling on this case, he says, is this data generated through an experiment? Or is this just and observational data generated with self-selection of people. So that's a critical question judge should ask before he rules of shutting down, say, Aga Khan. And he should, of course, say that this is not enough evidence to shut down Aga Khan Hospital because people who are, uh, who are basically going to the hospital are not the same as people you have randomly sampled outside the hospital. So obviously, it depends on the type of judge uh, a Supreme Court judge will use AI completely differently than, say, a civil judge. But what can, in, a, in broad strokes, if I want to answer it, AI can be exceptionally helpful. It can, for example, quickly summarize for you on your fingertips the most relevant cases which are for your case at hand. 
AI can also uh, summarize judgment text for you. You can basically summarize in bullet points what is the main points of, of a very complicated and say convoluted uh, written decisions from, from past ago. AI also has the potential to basically uh, help judge decide between very difficult cases. It can tell you examples, it, it can be kind of, uh, it can give examples on the similar cases which were there, the, the bench composition of these cases, so what each judge said, for example, the dissenting notes and the not dissenting notes. So basically, AI is a powerful tool to collect, summarize, and simplify uh, the large corpus of, of judgment text data and help you make sense of it uh, quicker than what, uh, for example, a filing clerk or even a team of uh, people could do, can do. So it depends on the kind of AI engine you use. So, uh, for example, the US database, AI has access, any even ChatGPT, some simple 3.5 version of ChatGPT has has uh, judgments from the US courts. This was uh, uh, collected by University of Washington, uh, Washington Law School. So, uh, so, so th it is, but for Pakistan, of course, for Pakistani judgments, uh, for the 3.5 version, you, you don't have uh, all the legal databases because they are passport protected, for example, the Pakistan law site. But that doesn't mean it's not very useful for judges. First of all, another course which, which uh, we are planning to do uh, with uh, Professor Elliot Ash from the University of Zurich is actually precisely on this topic, that how can we use Pakistan data and more recent data to, uh, to make uh, judicial decisions and use this relevant this. And for that, we are actually in talks with the Swiss Science Foundation to help our, give our judges for free data, uh, chat GPT-4 Turbo, which is non-free, which is not free. And that for that, you have judge access to many of the judicial databases, even Pakistani judicial databases. And to give them this, uh, the, uh, the idea is to give as many judges as possible who are interested to use AI, uh, this access so they can make better decisions. But at the same time, I want to just highlight that this course will not just be on giving the AI access. This course, which we are uh, uh, designing, this is a separate course from data, uh, data Science for Judges. The AI for Judges would also involve figuring out and for judges, the training judges to know what, how to use that AI. So it's not just uh, giving them something, it's also telling them how to make the best use of this uh, very powerful tool. Uh, I think uh, judges can, there is a huge potential in Pakistan. So it's not just uh, Pakistan judiciary has a lot of backlog, but at the same time it tells us that every crisis creates an opportunity. So what we can do is basically uh, build the human capital of our judges here. And I'm really honored to be here among you to basically and become part of this revamping. And I think this whole reinventing of uh, the Judicial Academy, thanks to you and Justice Shah, we are actually, I think this brings me a lot of hope that uh, case backlog and delays is going to really reduce in Pakistan, especially with the help of AI, understanding of data science, and coming to your question specifically, so what are the trainings which are most useful? I think number one training uh, which I think would be most useful is of course understanding of data. So what is data? How to interpret data? So data science for judges. The second most relevant would be of course AI. Things like how can we make the best use of ChatGPT? ChatGPT is not just a fun tool, it's an extremely powerful tool. And, and how can you, what are the differences between the non-paid ChatGPT and paid ChatGPT, and how can you use the chat, uh, paid ChatGPT to maximize uh, fair judgments and to reduce backlog? I guess the last and the third is, I think because many of the, for example, a session judge, is not just deciding on criminal cases. He's also the, the administrative head of a district. So there is also, many people don't recognize that judges also are administrative agents and, and qualities like leadership are extremely important. So I was very happy to hear when the Federal Judicial Academy was also thinking about leadership training and training in soft skills 
in uh, emotional intelligence which are extremely important. Things like teamwork is something which is not taught, but these things are is very important. So these three trainings, so hard skills, data science, uh, AI for judges need to be combined with soft skills like teamwork, uh, trainings on emotional intelligence. So these will be the three uh, uh, trainings I, I would say are the most important.